yesterday is historic and changes everything. And the White House was even asked about it, and they just kind of blew it off. Eh, we're not really worried about it. But they are worried about it, and they are watching it very closely because this changes everything. Watch. Xi Jinping made history today. The Chinese president landed in Riyadh. A red carpet awaited him. A historic Arab-China summit is to take place. And as the cameras of the world zoomed into Saudi Arabia, it was the United States that was watching most closely, with worry, with fear. America was watching its oil diplomacy fall apart. So, wow, it is happening. More on that major piece of news in a second. But first, another major blow to the U.S. dollar yesterday. Overnight, we learned that the BRICS nations are now expanding. Yes, Egypt has officially joined the BRICS Development Bank. So let's be clear what's happening right in front of our faces. The BRICS nations of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are building their own reserve currency built on gold and other commodities like uranium, graphite, copper. The United States dollar is built on debt and the nothing, just like the never-ending story. What is the nothing? It's the emptiness that's left. What is the nothing? Well, Atreyu, the nothing is a failure of Western hegemony, which is built on a house of cards. And now Egypt is applying for full membership in the BRICS alliance, but they're joining the bank piece of this first. And also Turkey, Saudi Arabia, they're both applying for BRICS membership as well, away from the US dollar as a reserve currency. So you can just imagine for a moment, a Russia, Saudi, China, India currency backed by gold? It's game on. Now, BRICS is working to develop its own financial infrastructure, including a joint payment network, with some member states having already switched to trade in local currencies in order to reduce dependence on the U.S. dollar and the euro. The five BRICS economies currently account for more than 40% of the world's population and nearly a quarter of global GDP. So, guys, it's happening. And then you want to layer in Saudi Arabia and Turkey and Egypt again. This house of cards is falling. So this BRICS news is a huge piece of the story. So why is Saudi Arabia turning its back on the United States? Well, it can be traced back to one event, one big event, the start of the war in Ukraine. OPEC Plus and Saudi Arabia specifically warned the United States not to impose sanctions on Russia. They didn't listen. Europe didn't listen. Instead, they pig-headedly did the opposite, and we thought our relationship with Saudi Arabia would continue unabated. We'll just continue to buy your oil, send you weapons, and everything will be okay. Nope, not even close. In fact, this is a failure of the Biden administration of the highest order, and it will hurt America's ability to secure low-cost oil, period. And John Kirby was asked about it, and he said, ah, the Saudis love us. We'll go. We've got nothing to worry about. Clearly, we're better partners than they are. Forget those Chinese and those Russian partners. Who cares? So they're living in a fantasy world at the White House. So let's unpack why this is a game changer for the U.S. power dynamic. Now, President Xi Jinping never leaves his country. He's kind of like me, never leaving my house. He only leaves when he's making big deals to weaken the United States and strengthen China. Meeting with Putin to create a new BRICS currency and leave behind the U.S. dollar, or flying to Kazakhstan, which he did. In September, President Xi flew to Kazakhstan to secure a huge oil guarantee for lower-cost petroleum for China, and also refined copper for making electronics. And in return, China will send electronics and shoes and manufactured clothing back to Kazakhstan. And now a trip to Saudi Arabia for Xi Jinping to line up massive amounts of oil for China. Now, this comes just months after President Joe Biden bumbled his way through the Middle East and vowed in a speech during his visit to Saudi Arabia that the United States would not leave a vacuum in the Middle East to be filled by China, Russia, and Iran. Watch. Tomorrow, I'll also be laying out an affirmative framework for America's engagement in the Middle East to build on these important steps going forward. The bottom line is this trip is about, once again, positioning America in this region for the future. We are not going to leave a vacuum in the Middle East for Russia or China to fill, and we're getting results. Saudi Arabia has traditionally been one of the U.S. closest partners in the region and relies heavily on American military aid. But now, of course, that's changing right before our eyes. The Saudis even launched jets and chemtrailed the skies with the colors of the Chinese flag.
They didn't do that for the United States. The Saudis love chemtrails and cloud seeding. What better way to welcome China than with a little rain from our cloud seeding program? So we've seen the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia give the middle finger to the United States over the past few weeks and openly build closer ties with China, its largest trading partner, and with Russia, and with whom it leads the OPEC Plus grouping. Want to know just how bad it is? We've covered this more deeply in our show. I'll put a card here up on the screen up here for you guys to watch where we actually went deeper into the Saudi Crown Prince story ordering the execution of Washington Post reporter Jamal Khashoggi. And President Biden said during the campaign that he would treat Saudi Arabia like a pariah for this killing. We were not going to, in fact, sell more weapons to them. We were going to, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. Well, of course, that didn't happen. Instead, he flew to the Saudi kingdom, gave a fist bump to the prince, and just this week had a judge throw out the case against the prince. So he orders the killing of a journalist, an American journalist, and President Biden steps in and throws it away. So let's get this right. A U.S. journalist targeted for execution by the Saudi government. Biden said he would hold him accountable. Then he has the case thrown out. And the very same day, the Saudis sign a giant oil deal with the Chinese, therefore pushing the United States out of the way. I mean, this is a failure of the highest order for the Biden administration and also for justice. So what did China secure in this partnership with Saudi Arabia? Well, they signed 34 deals over the past 24 hours, including investments in solar panels, green energy, information technology, cloud services, transport, construction, but most notably, oil. It's a $30 billion agreement. So let's get this right. This is all happening when Europe has dropped dependence on Russia's oil and natural gas from 40% down to 9%, while at the same time shutting down nuclear power plants. Are they insane? Well, the answer is yes, and OPEC Plus just announced on Sunday that the production cut of oil is just beginning. Remember the one that they promised us back in October, where they would cut 2 million barrels of oil per day? So China and Russia are securing deals with Saudi Arabia, and Europe and the United States are getting screwed in the process. And as we've been covering, Europe is now paying triple the price to have liquid natural gas processed and shipped from the United States into Europe. Of course, the same with oil. So instead of a freaking pipeline coming directly from Russia, they instead blew it up, natural gas pipeline, and they're going to be putting oil and natural gas on ships and sending it across the ocean, because that makes a lot of sense. And worse, of course, Europe is now restarting its dirty coal-powered plants because it's shut down nuclear plants. They're doing this in UK and Germany, and as our friend Ralph Schulhammer points out, this is pure madness. And the other point is, if you look at Germany at the moment, I mean, this is, oh, it's, if it wouldn't be so sad, it would be hilarious. Uh, currently, while we are talking, uh, Germany's electricity production is one of the dirtiest in the world. It's dirtier than India, it's dirtier than South Africa. They're like number 170 out of 177 nations when it comes to CO2 emissions uh, per, per kilowatt hour produced. Because there is not a lot of wind and not a lot of sun at the moment. So where do they get electricity from? They get it from burning coal and they get it from burning gas, which is, of course, significantly more CO2 intensive. And they still insist on saying, no, we're going to close down nuclear. It makes no difference. And Putin could deal the death blow to Europe if he stops sending uranium. The U.S. produces no uranium right now, zero. And Europe is starting to see how important nuclear power is. But if Putin shuts down their supply of uranium, then we're truly in the dark ages. But the precious minerals piece of this story is just as important because many of the minerals needed for nuclear energy come from China and Russia. In the United States, we have a shortage of these minerals to build nuclear reactors. So China will help provide these precious minerals to Saudi Arabia. And we are scrambling at home to try to get them out of the ground. So we will be watching this story very closely because it's incredibly important. So that's the news update. Wow, what China just did yesterday 